Hi, my name is Janet Skinner. Sometimes in life we need a purpose to continue. And back in the early 1990s, I was looking for a reason to live, if you like. Um, just happened by accident one day that I saw that Jibung Station, which is in Queensland, was going to be demolished and replaced. So I decided to paint it. And during the 1990s, I painted 104 railway scenes and that kept me going. As I sat on the platform and railway sidings, old people would come over and speak to me and tell me about life in the good old days. These were elderly people. It transpired that many of them were born in the early 1900s. I wrote down their names and phone numbers and I went back and interviewed them. There's a series of some 35 railway tapes that I'm making of the interviews that I recorded in New South Wales and Queensland. I'm not a journalist. I've got no background training in interviewing. And I really hope you enjoy these films. Um, I hope they bring laughter to many and insight into as what life used to be like. And please bear with me. I had fun doing them and I hope you have fun listening to them. Thank you so much. Can we talk about in the Indian Pacific now and your trip? Yeah. Well, we went over in 1987. Um, we travelled on the travelled over on the trans from Adelaide to uh, Perth, and then we came back on the Indian Pacific. There's no difference; they're back the same train virtually. But it is um, it's just a magic trip. If so, the Indian Pacific. Um, now can go from Perth to Brisbane. Can it it could, could do, yeah. yeah. It's going to Sydney at the moment, but they're talking yeah. about they're going to bring it, did, it all away. It, it did come up here. Yeah, that was just a promotional yeah. trip. Yeah. But it is just a, it's just a top train. It's just, yeah. it's so it? comfortable and. You went to. Uh, what about the food and stuff? Food's food? magic. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Like. Uh, well, it's. Little bits of. And things like that and well, yeah, but it's um, well, it's, it's pretty basic, I suppose. What you'd call uh, like hotel type meals, like you know. But just to be sitting in a having lunch in the train and you're going across the middle of the desert, like you know, and there's nothing there, and they're serving this pretty posh tucker. Yeah. Well, you know, nice, yes. nice yes. food and everything, and. Um, it was good, but the meals were humongous. That's uh, that's what we couldn't. We put on about three kilos going up on the train. Dinner, yeah. Breakfast was was you'd have whatever you wanted. Lunch was three course, and dinner was a four course. No, you got to sit. You got to be seated at the table. Silver service it was. Yeah. And the waiters. Yeah, but you want to see them bolting down a train with plates up their arms with meals on and then get to you and then serve them. <laughs> I suppose it's going at quite a speed, isn't it? Oh, yeah, yeah, well, well, it couldn't go um, at the time. It goes a lot faster. It goes a bit faster now, but that time they had, a, I think, a 90 kilometre an hour or 100 kilometre an hour speed limit on it because they're frightened if anything happened. It was a heat wave, really. Yeah, but there was high temperatures. If anything happened, there's nowhere to, to get help. But there were a lot of the places that got their flying doctor airstrips beside the stations so they do have problems where was a big bitumen one a forest there was a huge runways like a big airport out in the middle of the desert it was all bitumen runways and everything and you stop every so often do you well the train stops at um you stop when it's got to do safe working and that but the only place you stop and you can get out is cook when you get out the nullarbor plane in the middle of the nullarbor plane you get out of cook right. and that's what is there? I mean well, that's that's the only manned railway station between uh, Port Augusta and uh, between Tarcoola and uh, uh, 
Kalgoorlie. And, uh, Have you a lovely job in? Oh, yeah, but there's three blades there. Is there a town there? Yeah, there's, oh, there's a hospital and a school, but it's a railway town. Right. Everyone that works there works in the railway. But there's a lot of old equipment lying around there from when the steam trains used to run because it was a, a steam depot and coaling station and everything where they used to do the, do the locos. And that's all just lying there, rusting away. But now it's just a refuelling point for the diesels. When the train pulls up, they've got all these refuelling bows and sort of things like, and they just fill the train up with, right. and fill the passenger cars with water. Right. So how long does it take from Perth to... Well, where did you go from Perth? Perth to Sydney. Takes three days. We left mm. Perth on... Do you find you it leave? too much sitting down all the time, or did you get up oh, and you No, to well, it, it depends if, um, if you can mix with other... We, we were lucky. We got... They ask you to stay... You have different sittings for your meals, see? So, I mean, the first-class passengers go to the dining room, the second class passengers they've got to go to a, like a, a buffet sort of a thing but we go to the dining room and they have different sittings for meals, first, second and third sitting and they ask you that once you're sort of seated that you sit with the same group of people we lucky we got stuck, there was two tables of us opposite and we just sort of mixed in, well we had a ball like you know because you'd go down the conductor comes and wakes up in the morning with a cup of tea and a biscuit and everything and you get up and you have your shower and, and then the, they've got PA system all through the train, all into your compartments like, you know, and then they'll just say, well, the second sitting for breakfast is now. So you go down, you have your breakfast and you come back to your thing. And you come back to like a club car. You come back to the club car if you wanted to and sit down and have a cup of coffee and relax. Mm -hmm. So uh, most of the journey, are you, when you're not eating, are you sitting in your own room? Oh, no, you can go and sit in the club cars. So they can watch video. They've got videos now, but they didn't have videos then. But they have a piano in there. and uh, But you just get together and, the, you know, the people playing cards or just sitting down, just sitting... To now, they say the Nullarbor is boring. Well, it didn't worry me. I could sit there and just look out the window. There so is it just a flat... It red, is flat. Red, no, it's, like it's red. green. Oh, it's green grass. Yes, it's it's I, not grass, it's salt bush sort of stuff, I like know. spinifex, yeah. grass yeah. sort of stuff. But it... Um, it I think it depends on what time of the year you go. Yeah. You know, if, if you went earlier than us, you might have got wild flowers. Yeah. But Any animals? Sorry. Oh, yeah, the, a lot of bird life and kangaroos. Is, That's where the... Yeah, every... Animals. All, all the eagles build in the telephone in the in the railway telephone poles, and every yeah. telephone pole have a big eagle's nest in it. Really? Because there's no trees, so they, mm -hmm. the only place they can nest off the ground is up, up on these telephone poles. And all these posts that have all these piles of so sticks be, where the birds would nest up on the tree. So they'd be governed on Oh, all the way along, every nearly every pole had an eagle's nest really? on it, but there's not there now because. Uh, a few years ago they went and put um, fiber optic cable through and they pulled the overhead oh, that's they have the poles up there for the birds yeah. Yeah. well I think they pulled them down I don't know but I know Telecom won a big contract to put this fiber optic communication system in so they could improve the safe working with the trains that have better communications with the trains yeah but just the different scenery, like you know, you, when you when you think about it, you leave Sydney and you climb up over through the Blue Mountains. Then it's dark, and you sort of wake up and you're in you live in Broken Hill, and then it's all flat country all the way until you get out near Adelaide, and then you go into Adelaide and you come back out of Adelaide and you retrace a lot of your thing. But then you get round Port Augusta. Uh, it's all wheat country, you know. But then once you leave Port Augusta, you're starting to get in the real dry country, and it's all big salt lakes. You'd be running beside these salt lakes, and there's one on this side of the train, there's one on that side of the train, for miles, like you know. And then all of a sudden, it's just red sand hills, like. And then. And what about the Great Australian Bike? Does the train come anywhere? No, no, no. no. By bus, you yeah. by bus you get to see a bit of that, but the train runs right across. Uh, they don't stop the train, so you can... No. No. no, no. no. At Kalgoorlie, they, they stop the, the train. And then 
Kenya. You can do a tour of Kalgoorlie, but they just take you around a tour of the brothels in Kalgoorlie. That's yep. <laughs> Well, see, Kalgoorlie is the only place in Western Australia where brothels are tolerated. Really? They're not legal, but they're tolerated. Yes. And the, the great trip is that you get off the train while the train's there and they take you around and they show you. But you can't see anything. It's only just all these rows of galvanised iron fences. The sides, the old tin fronts. They, they but they've all got the modern in behind them, like, you know. To see it, you and that's the only... That's the, but we went back to Kalgoorlie and done a... Um, uh, another tour where you went down the gold mines and all the rest of it. But uh, oh, if anyone can ever go on the Indian Pacific, I, I think it is a. It's just a thing. If it's it's a part of your holiday, that's the oh, thing. I can imagine. It, it's it's just part of your holiday. It's part of your trip. But like, you know, you, uh, we fly. You know, you fly to Sydney. Well, an hour on the thing. But there's nothing. What, you don't see anything. What's the furniture like inside? The, oh, the well, everything's, everything's nice. Right. It's all stainless steel, and you go in. You got your, your double compartment. You got two beds, one at the bottom and one at the top. And uh, the top one folds down during the day. Then you just got a great big lounge that you can sort of loll around on all day. It's about seven foot long. <laughs> you can loll around on that all day, and then. You go into, you've got a wardrobe and a um, wash basin and a refrigerated water and then you go into your shower um, thing and that's a shower and toilet cubicle. You can go in there and the, the, shower, the toilet just comes out of the wall and when you're not, when you're, you're having a shower you're just, it's, um, you're just in a stainless steel room. There's not a lot of room in there like, you know, but there's enough room to have a shower and and get clean, but it's it's just nice. Mm, nice relaxing. They've got bed lights. You've got bed lights for reading, and and could you sleep on the train? Oh, no trouble. No, no. You yeah. yeah. It rocks you to sleep, doesn't it? Well, but no, it wasn't the rock, and you'd have sleep. What we used to have the footers to sleep. Oh, right, the wine. But when Don went up, this drop of the good stuff. Yeah. Don's long sex, and I bought a book. My ticket to Cairns. I brought it back. Took it to Perth, took it to yeah, uh, Alice Springs, Alice Springs. Took it to Perth, and I didn't open it until one, the last night we were coming back across the Mullabit. The wine's good on the train, isn't it? Oh, well, they've got a, but well, you go up to the club car of a night time, and like everybody sits there, and you yeah. see it's a great uh, it cross section of, uh, it can be as social or as private as you want it. Like, you know, you can if you want to be social. Well, there's people there that appear to be, be you can be social with. But if you just want to be private, well, you just sit in your own mm-hmm. own little corner, and you, the bars up there, that, so and they're many, they're good. The staff look good. How many carriages? Really? Well, really yeah. in well, we have about and fifteen carriages. And worked hard to make you on know, the which train. You did enjoy the trip. Yeah. yeah, we had about fifteen carriages because. We, when we were coming back, we were running late because oh, it was terribly hot and the, the air conditioning, uh, the power car was having trouble coping with the air conditioning because instead of the air conditioning units cutting in and out, they were going continuously because it was so hot. And when we got to Port Augusta, they were talking about that's when the Alice, the GAN, was, was in trouble too, his power car because it was so hot. And they were talking about combining the trains and the train would have been about 35 carriages long. Did you go and see it when it came to Brisbane? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Did you go up the front? You said, did you go up the front? No, I didn't go up the front, yeah. no. Oh, I went, yeah, up the, the CLP oh, okay. was up the front, yeah, because they had to get the power from that to run the air conditioning. Mm. But when we went, yeah. the power didn't come from the diesel, the power came from a special wagon that was on the train, like the Sunlander, it had its own generating set in it, and it used to generate the electricity to supply the train. When you, when you when you refer to the Indian Pacific, it's just the train in general. I mean, because it can be a different local. Oh train. yeah, no, it's just the train in general. Yeah, yeah, it's just the right. passenger carriages. Because yeah. there was a pool of carriages. Because um, when we went on the Gan, we went on uh, we had an older type carriage, but it was it weighed about seventy ton and it rode like a dream. Oh, it was beautiful because we we had. Um, we had a sleeper on that going up to uh, Alice Springs and 
he just went to bed of a night time, he just died. The only reason he woke up in the morning is because the conductor would come along and tap on your door and give you a cup of tea. They had a hairdresser on. They had a hairdresser on again, yeah. Is that a hairdresser on the Pacific or not? Well, I don't know if they do now or not, they used to. Okay. Um, we're just going back now, still talking to Donnie about... Um,